Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and to this Elysium. So, let's continue. Last time we were talking with the kid here and she gave us a nice detective hat, which gives us plus one encyclopedia, but this time, instead, we are going out of the library and we are gonna go to Kim's car. Uh, we have a couple of things to do there, plus we have uh, uh, to talk with the Hardy Boys if they're still around. Uh, they're inside the wheelings and rugs. <laughs> Uh, oh wait, every time we get close here we get this, yeah. Uh, it takes willpower to even read the author's name, Jean Cos from Gaunia. Okay. Uh, Alright, sure. I mean, interesting. So let's go towards the... Oh, those waves are always so... <laughs> so uh, loud whenever you get by. Oh! Interfacing. The snow covers the white and um, blue police livery of the motor carriage. The white colors nearly meld together. Uh, wait, why am, I even, why am I even thinking about this? Wasn't I supposed to... Exactly. Uh, do something important? Something <laughs> murder related? There is always something important. Doesn't mean you can't take a moment to admire this piece of machinery. Okay. This is a Kupris Kinema, the Kupris Motor Corpus follow-up to their highly successful workhorse, the Kupris 40, and the answer to the LUM's Racing Bread Fever series. Uh, with its air-cooled, rear-mounted, 12-cylinder compression ignition engine driving the rear wheels through a 4-speed manual gearbox, the Kinema is able to reach 100 km per hour in 13.5 seconds and go on to a top speed of 180 km an hour. Wow, and that thing? Holy crap, I would never go 180 <laughs> on the, on that kind of thing. I mean, you can see the engine is pretty big, so it makes sense, but yeah. Uh, when it roll over in the first sharp corner, uh, well, that's what it looks like. Turn your attention to the motor carriage itself. Uh, when it roll over, the high center of balance is offset by a large battery bank mounted at the bottom of the cabin, feeding all the auxiliary systems and making the Kinema effectively a mobile power plant. Okay. Uh, this tech talk is really robbing me the right way here. Alright. Uh, due to a, a quite steep price tag, it is very unusual to see one in police livery. The machine really puts the loco back in locomotion and point to the vehicle. Very cool. Uh, unlike a machine, the looks in practical. Uh, sure, puts the loco back in locomotion. Uh, mm -hmm. The lieutenant smiles ever so slightly. You want to take a closer look? Uh, what's he packing there? Uh... Oh, sure. 130. Uh, I reckon... Oh, sorry. Uh, I reckon that's a 7 liter V12 there. Uh, man, that's got to be a major advancement over the KR18GU engine on the old Cupris 40. Okay. Uh, that's what? Uh, a 7 liter V12? I mean, it says that it's a 7 liter V12. Uh... <laughs> Mama's serving some serious macaroni. Wow. -y. Um. Sure. Uh. Seven liter V twelve. Seven point two supercharged. The lieutenant is trying to uh, suppress his mug smile unsuccessfully. Uh. Okay. I mean, we can answer the other things too. I suppose. Uh. Uh, yeah, you know it, the lieutenant seems surprised. Just the basics, cast iron blocks, swirl chamber injection, dual chains driving overhead um, had camshafts, two valves per cylinder, hydraulic valve lash adjustment. Uh, uh, yes, that's right, he stares you in surprise. I'm very impressed that you know these things. Um, okay. I mean, I suppose... What is the last one? Mama service on serious macaroni. Yep. He lost me there. He's looking at super plaques. 130 kilowatts is a lot of power, Kim. The Kinema is fast. Feels right home on the race motor track. Hard to find something that could overtake it. Hyrmel Ryu Supersonic, a racing motorbike for the road, could probably do it. Uh, fine machine. Run your hand over the smooth metal surface. Yes, there is a gentleman. Uh, there is a gentleness in the lieutenant's voice as his eyes run over the vehicle's contours. An extraordinary machine. It's nice and all, but why so modest? Put some zing into it. Flare it up. Slam it down. No. Helium headlights would improve the range and quality of the visual field a lot. <laughs> you need to slam it, Kim. <laughs> Make it more imposing. Ever thought about switching to helium headlights? Um, uh, no. Let's put this. Uh, actually, I have a pair at home. I just haven't gotten around to finding them yet. I need to lay some wiring for the 
ballasts first. Uh, if you ever get this case solved, maybe we can do this together. Okay. Uh, you want to help? Um, he glances at you and smiles. Uh, thank you for the offer. Th that might be fun. Let's do the case first, though, all right? He liked the idea. Uh, what about the other the other option? That looked funny. Yeah, need to slam it, can make it more imposing. Sorry, I'm not following you. Lingo it up. Drop the right to hunt the mill. Get the chamber to frosty, frosty menaces. Uh, no, that's um okay. <laughs> Wait, what about the spinners then, huh? Uh, those penis were elegant, sleek, he pauses looking for words, radiant even. Uh, what you're suggesting is that... <clears throat> uh, I mean... I mean... Mm, trust me, it's cool. <laughs> That's true, uh, yeah, I, I get it. So the purpose of that is to... Uh, yeah, I know, I know, same true things. Uh, completely different. Uh, something completely different. Um... That's a negative on her, thank you though. Okay, the one in the history of convictions has been more sure of anything. <laughs> Alright, let's move. Um, out of saving, uh, interesting. Okay. Uh... So let's see. Inside so, Sierra so Libres. Okay, how did we. Uh, I guess in the radio. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Um, mm, so we want either. We want the Lazarette for sure. And the serial number. Let's go with the serial number first. Pair of armor boots. Okay. Uh, sure, officer. What's the number and the make of the armor if you know it? This is the. Uh, Okay. Task updated. Um, okay. Um, one second. All right. Got it. So I contact the ICP database immediately. Call back tomorrow. Hopefully they'll have dug up something useful by then. Okay. The international collaboration. So wait, we need to call back tomorrow. Okay. International collaboration police ICP is an inter. Interisolary law enforcement service, um, the crown jewel in the moral intern uh, diadem, alongside EPIS and the coalition government. Wow, that's so many weird words in that. Um, and this is for our economy to the station. Um, let's see. Um, sure, let's go to the Lazarette. It'll take just a moment, officer. Her voice, uh, voices, her voices, I guess her voice, fades out into the familiar radio static. Okay. 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 Ow. What you want? What you want? What do you mean, what you want? That That's kind of a weird, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> way for Lazarus, which I suppose it's a... Uh, Therapist of some kind. <laughs> uh, you hear a man uh, clearing his throat briskly, then an answer. Okay. Uh, he's carelessly chewing on a piece of a heart. Uh, okay. Uh, just a routine check of. Uh, I'm in a bad way, Doc. A real bad way. Um, I'm still to call the lads. Right? People are worried about me. Okay. Oh. It's you. <laughs> it's you. Uh, I see. <laughs> yes, it's Firewalker here. <gasps> Um, uh, okay, I lost my memory all of it. Um, uh, yes, yeah, it's Firewalker here. Firewalker? Yes, yes you are. Just don't breathe, uh, in the general direction of your fire feet. Actually, wait. Uh, do exactly that. Puff yourself out of your misery. <laughs> oh, put yourself. Why did you say puff? <laughs> put yourself. Take a deep uh, diaphragmatic uh, breath in and... You hear an exaggerated inhale and then a long exhale on the other side of the line. Uh, it would be an artistic statement of some kind or another. Uh, Self-immolation has been all the rage in low manthang for a while now, especially among university students. It is particularly popular in Kohoi, where such acts get the most press. <laughs> but why? Uh, okay. 
young religious people protesting in the Serai's government, which they consider to be oppressive. It also got something to do with, en with encroaching Occidental influences on the local way of life. You have to not like a lot of things to set yourself on fire. True. Uh, young people are stupid. Um, <laughs> she was young and on fire. Nope. Uh, uh, they're stupid. Yes, especially young people in young countries. Anyways, uh, uh, anyway, answer the man. Uh, I feel like you're making fun of me. Uh, comes the fact to himself. That would be quite an interesting conceptual piece, don't you think? I feel like you're making. Uh, well, let's go with this. Sounds more like uh, an. Oh, that got me an achievement. Okay, the art cup. <laughs> interesting. Sounds more like a newspaper headline that will surprise absolutely no one. Now, do you have any current pressing medical problems? I uh, think I had a heart attack. And you survived it. Congratulations. Are you mobile? Yes. Even better. Anything else? I wouldn't worry about that. Officers your age have coronary trouble all the time. Also, that is a natural part of life. You're not really doing a good job for what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Accept it. The body is an object and objects break down. Do what good you can with yours before the rest goes too. <laughs> Uh, okay, I lost my memory, I love it. Uh, with all the damage you've been dealing yourself with, with that and alcohol, I'm not surprised. You're not surprised? Okay. Anything else? What else? I'm not a brain doctor. Look on the bright side. You've got a whole new life now. Use it wisely. True. That's why I'm not drinking or doing anything like that. It's hard to say if he doesn't believe you or doesn't care. Is there anything you can do for me? Uh, what? You want me to do a blood work for you again? Tell you just how bad things really are across the board? You want another random of everything collapsing inside your body? Uh, doesn't sound like something I can handle. Uh, well, we got our shit together with the thoughts, so maybe we can handle it. Uh, yes, I want the truth. You want the real honest to truth? Stop drinking. Eat magnesium and vitamin D. Our station is not a retirement home. We don't have the funds to deal with rock stars past their prime. Uh, ooh, the money's probably going to some old oily. Uh, and no, I don't want to hear a political commentary on the topic. In fact, I've got work to, uh, work to do. Some idiot has glued his eyelids sharp with, <laughs> with cyanocrylate. It looks like Mac Thorson. Uh, okay, that's an interesting way. Uh, oh, <laughs> it's that guy that was making fun of, uh, uh, of us. It's not a cryoactylate, it's super glue, Doc. Uh, cyanoacrylate is super glue. Alright. Well, I suppose that's it for now. And we got 30 XP. Okay. For just doing that. Mm -hmm. The phone clicks, suddenly you hear the already familiar voice. Anything else I can help you with, officer? Uh, I mean, at this point... Uh, I mean, sure, have you heard back from them? No, I doubt they'll get back to me before tomorrow morning. Anything else? Uh, do we need to call Sylvie again for something? Uh, okay, this was the... Uh... The other quest, the uh, call the lazaret, yes, this one. Uh, do we need to call run the number? Yes, call back tomorrow. Uh, I mean, maybe we can add, update them on this. Uh, oh, I don't know. Let's see. Let's find it out, I guess. Uh, connect to Sylvie. Just a second. Sylvie, I'm like on the line for you, officer. Yes, yes hello. Uh, it's the police oh, again. Great. <laughs> oh, great. What uh, what is the... Detective? Uh... Well, I mean, I guess nothing. There is nothing new here. Okay. Uh, what about the precinct? <laughs> she sighs. Right, please hold. Uh, and... Uh, nothing here either. Okay, so nothing else that we can do in the car. Uh, does it say anything about what we learned? Yes. Probably not. Not. Okay. So, uh, we have a bunch of time still. Uh, oh, can we pick up that cup, maybe? Is it a pickable cup? Nope, apparently not. Uh, so, we said that we would go and talk with the, uh, with the people in there, because we do have some news for them. Are they still there? Yes, they are. Good. Uh, is there anything else that we can do before that? Just to, you know, kind of like make sure that we are not missing anything here. Uh, the lady here is the taxidermologist. Oh, the, no, not the taxidermologist, the, uh, the scientist. <laughs> More uh, cryptids. Uh, nah, not right now. 
Okay, so let's talk with them, I suppose. I guess we need to talk with her first. Uh, apparently not. Okay. And... Oh, wait, what about the window? Can we do that now? Or is it still to... Uh... No, it's still 3%. No time yet. Reverse your guys. So let's see. Oh, every time we want to talk... The circus left town, but the clowns are still here. Uh-huh. Kitty does not particular does not look particularly happy to see you. So every time we talk with him, we have to step back and wait for him to come from in front. That's nice. Uh, I found eight sets of footprints, but there is only seven of you. What is the eight Hardy Boy? What are you talking about, mad madman? There is no eight Hardy Boy. There is seven of us, and we're all here. He sizes you up, or what? You wanna be the eight Hardy Boy? We ain't hiding. He shakes his head. Gained five XP. Actually, boss, we've been talking and we uh, think she could maybe... Oh, so it's a she. Wait, could it be... Wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Maybe she's the eighth one and it's a she. Uh, she? So there is an eight hardy and it's a hardy girl. Who might it be? Elizabeth the gardener? Yeah, exactly. I was thinking about that. Uh, shut the fuck up, Glenn. He roars. I do the talking here. No, what, uh, what do you want, cop? Uh, it has to be good if he won't let you pursue it. Looks like the lieutenant thinks so, too. So let me get this straight. There is an A-Hardy boy. It's a she, and you don't like us talking about her? That's right, we're not talking about this. This is a private Hardy boy's matter. Nothing to do with your stuff. And, he points at the lieutenant, uh, you're not cops here. Uh, don't go dinging around if you don't want to pull it in the back of your head. I'm watching you. Good. We're all watching each other. The lieutenant adjusts his spectacles. Officer, your question? Uh, okay, guess what? I've come up with something. Exactly. <laughs> uh, that's a big word. He put his beer can down. Why is there a container belt around the dead man neck? And why are your boot prints all over the scene? Uh, well, let's start with this. You mean these boots? He raises his worker boots, sex 46, still in four so Yes. We all got a pair, he squints. We wore them the night we took the pretty boy out back and hung him by the neck. Yeah, we did this. Uh, it looks you dead in the eye, together, all of us, until he was dead. That's why our prints are all over, all over the scene. Uh, aha, so he just confessed to murder. That's it, game over, we got sure. Uh, he just confessed to murder. Uh, gun on right eye. Uh, oh, okay, so... We interrogated them when we got the experience, but, uh, okay, so she is gonna interject now, because he's, uh, he's basically saying that they did it. Okay, so we know that they did it, like, 100%, basically. Uh, no, the woman interjects, these seven honest men have equally come forth, they told you what happened, so that you don't waste any more of your time. All seven, together, they're the looting responsibility, it's an anti-arrest uh, anti tactic. Okay. Um, uh, okay, okay, uh, so we have a few more questions now, um, uh, let's see, just like, uh, no, who called the shots that night? Are you deaf? There will be no uh, singling anyone out. You can't arrest our hardy boy without arresting all hardy boys. Do you think you could do that? Do you think you could arrest them all? A shadow of a smirk passes her lips as she tilts her head. Uh, a trick question. Don't let her lead the conversation. Dress Elizabeth or dress uh, 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 Titus? I don't have to. One of them was more complicit than others. No, but seriously, we cast the shots around here. Hmm... So, true, true, this would be, this would be, uh, mm. no, we should do this, we need to ignore her, otherwise she's gonna start leading the conversation, okay? What do you think he does? He sounds more amused than angry. Point at Titus, you do, you give commands, point at Elizabeth, I thought she did, <laughs> that's gonna make him angry. Point at Fat Angus, the biggest animal luminous I heard, I guess it's the big one. Uh, Bow to the bearded man, um, the one who's missing. Um, no, I wanna point at him because he's gonna be like, oh hell yeah I do, or something like that. So it's basically gonna say, it's basically saying that he caused the shots. Uh, you do, you give commands. 
That's right. Uh, Titus Hardy runs the Hardy Boys. Ain't that so, fellas? He looks around for approval. Titus Greens. I think you got your answer, Mr. Law. No, you did not get an answer. Titus does administrative work. He pushes, the, uh, he pushes paper, fill out forms. The others can't read. But on the night, they all acted as one man. Yes, yeah, she's still trying to kind of like save, hi uh, save him. Um, uh, okay, he did it just like that. No remorse. How many people have you sent to the ch uh, to the chase? Ever felt remorse for them? Uh, just the electric. Uh, oh, it's the the um. Okay, is the chaise long? They mean is the electrical chair. Uh, okay, have a under the coalition during suzerain reign. It used to be firing squad. Okay, uh, or send them to a reunion to rot for twenty years for life. Uh, it says that if it were worse than dying. Okay. Um, that's probably like just just prison. Uh, yes, but these were all bad people, criminals come on earth, uh, I'm just doing my job. Uh, what we do is different, we enforce the law, <laughs> you just keep people like it's nothing. Um, uh, okay. Uh, I mean, that guy probably also did something to be singled out, but... Sure. Uh, Tedus Greens, rest assured, Lawman, none worse than our guy. He got what was, what was coming to him. Um, alright. Uh, when did it occur? You don't have to keep answering his questions. The fixer turns to remind Titus. I know, Lizzie, relax. He takes a sip. We killed him last Sunday night. Uh, seemed like a good way to end the week. How long had you known the victim? Know him? We don't associate, associate with scum like that, asshole. <laughs> yeah, who do you think we are? Quite. I just gives Galen a stern look. He came around about three weeks ago when that pine scar first sailed into town. Happy? By the pine scar, you mean Joyce Messier, the representative for Wild Pines. The lieutenant pretends to check his nose. The same company you're striking against? No, he stresses. I mean the pine scar. <laughs> the stupid scar they sent to. Uh, okay. But you know what? He loves his chin pretending to mull it over. Why don't you ask her about the pretty uh, pre boy? I'm sure she has interesting things to say when you ask her hard enough. Okay, that's enough insinuation for today, Titus. She turns to you. Officer, your interview is drawing to an end. Don't waste your last questions. Uh, okay, why did you do it? Why? Uh, he had history state. Because he was worthless mercenaries come and he stepped out of line in my town. Oh, <laughs> so you're running this town? Interesting. So it was a mercenary, that's it? Uh, and he stepped out of line, he repeats. Jock clam shot like a vice. What kind of mercenary? Uh, the kind that shows up when you start to strike. The experienced kind, too. Had... Kohoi and Seminin written all over him, ex orange Special Forces, a live grenade, uh, the man spre uh, spreads his arms, right here in our, bar, in our bar. I can't prove it, but I know he was sent by the Wild Pines. They hire Merc, uh, stuff like that. Story of every strike from here to Samara. Hold on, how do you even know he was in Special Forces? Because one night he walked straight up to uh, the mic and said, I'm Orange's <laughs> Special Forces and I'm gonna... There, he didn't. Really? Yeah, really. Had a green and tonic up there, uh, sang some oranges by a trooper song and said he's gonna do that. We couldn't believe it uh, either, but he did, right there. He points at the stage like some kind of animal. Sir, the tale is true. This is a serious violation of the karaoke code. Right, but what did he actually do wrong? Um, okay, besides crime against karaoke, what did he actually do wrong? A wrong heroes, he harassed women, uh, did that, harassed workers, threatened to do something, okay. Uh, okay. From that to that, to threats of violence, uh, why this strange de-escalation? To uh, kill us all if we don't open the gates, if we don't let the scabs in, if we don't bend over, he cracks his knuckles, and that was before he started coming here. Yeah, I said he was his favorite joint now, started coming here every night, drinking, grabbing girls, grab one of our mid-karaoke, right there on the stage. He grabbed someone. The lieutenant is trying to make sense of the flow of information. Yeah, the girl's on the mic, a beautiful girl, young, gets into the second verse of Lover's Lake. The fucker grabs her leg, starts screaming. Uh, when, uh, okay. Uh, then he gets knocked on the head with a wine bottle, doesn't even fall down. He shakes his head in disbelief. Uh, was this the same girl? Was, uh, uh, okay. Uh, aren't you listening? My man is talking to you. He took care of it. They got the girl out before anything else could happen. Yeah, me and Eugene got her out. Aren't you listening? He repeats like a parrot. There's something odd here. Seems like they don't want to talk about that, uh, thing that it's mentioned. Why not? This is a serious allegation. Make them talk about it. Uh, okay. Right, but who did it then? Okay. 
Uh, no, there's a moment of silence. You're not getting a name. That's a Martinez matter, and I'm not discussing it with you clowns. Okay. How did you do it? Um, we hand him up by his neck until he got real uh, still. Uh, wasn't it obvious? Didn't they teach you anything at the cop school? Okay. This is where an autopsy would come in handy. You have to work with what you know. Uh, we need more. Did you muffle him? We haven't heard any reports of screams. Uh, Titus, you don't have to clarify anything. We overpower him, drag his unconscious body to the tree, put a thing, and till it was okay. Then we left him for seagulls, maggots, the small man points to you, and you. <laughs> uh, make them a bit more comfortable first, then see if it all adds up. Make them a bit more uncomfortable. Okay. Um. Oh, it's a red shack. Holy. Uh, okay. Uh, how long is the episode going? Because this is getting quite long. 25 minutes. Okay. We can do uh, a bit more, but then I'm going to close this conversation. Uh, wasn't he a train killer from uh, that? If yes, then how did you manage to overpower uh, him? Okay. Uh, with numbers, how do you think? He looks at the woman. You're right, Liz. I've done enough explaining here. No, he hasn't. Not yet. Where did this overpowering happen? Why don't you listen in? He came to our bar. He looks around. It happened right here. Okay. Uh, ooh, uh, we cannot exit. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Uh, okay, it's higher now. 72%. Shanky might be lying. Come on, 72%. Don't fail me. And let's go. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. It was a red shack. Ah. Uh, we got 11 out of 12. That's, that's annoying. Actually, there are middle bleeds surprisingly composed, the entire room, given how many questions you love their way. All of them? Maybe one of them is fidgeting, cracking under the pressure? Well, this one, but he's always fidgeting, so we don't get so don't get your hopes up. Damn, 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 we missed out on some probably very important information. Other question about the lynching, okay? Uh, why don't I just arrest you? Yeah, hello, man. He takes a step closer as well, fixing his ball cap. Why don't you? It's almost an anthropological sight, watching him try to assert dominance over you. Not in the arresting mood, his uh, mean little eyes come alive with hatred. Uh, by your side, the lieutenant keeps his hand away from his holster. You hear the nylon of his coat hiss as he steps closer. You confess the murder. I'm talking. I'm taking you in. Uh, step even closer. Look, copper. Titus uh, opens up his vest. Uh, revealing a holster firearm. I know you think you're doing your job here, but there are seven of us and two of you. Uh, that's an Easter 50, a Damask made monstrosity. It'll blow your head clean off. Uh, almighty God, <laughs> even Dick Mullen only has a 45. Okay, so it's a 50. Uh, you're under arrest, grab his uh, wrist. Uh, an Easter 50, you could blow Dick Mullen away with that. Back off, or the other guy was right, I'm not in the arresting mood. Um... Uh, I mean, do we want to try that? You're under arrest. I mean, where would we even put him, like, if we did that? Although, uh, like, we are in the middle of everywhere. They cannot also not really do anything that much. With, like, plenty of witnesses, they can come here in more numbers, technically. Uh, okay, grab his wrist. The last thing you hear is a little murmur, not a blast, not an echo. No one screams. It's impossible to say where it comes from. Oh. From the district of ah. Paris, as the bodies of two police officers are found floating in the canal. It is believed the officers were pursuing a murder investigation, but got caught in the dock workers strike and were gunned down under unclear circumstances. Such needless loss of life is truly tragic, a local union leader, Everard Clare, commented and added that although the event is truly horrid, we can expect similar incidents to follow if right-wing vigilantes huh. are allowed to run around uncontrolled and try to wriggle their way into well-organized neighborhoods. Wow, so, okay. So that didn't go as I expected. There was no warning or anything like, you know, it can be risky or something like that. I mean, I expected it to be risky, but... All right. Oh, wow, okay, we can only load. Interesting. Well, obviously, in the next episode, we are gonna load the game and take a, a different approach to this, I suppose. Uh, it, saved, uh, it saved out here at the car. 
So I'm going to redo what I did there at the car and come back to the conversation before the next episode, of course. Uh, as for this one, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.